warn them. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. The bridge is gone. Here comes my neighbor's car. I guess I'd better warn them. What if he gets mad at me because I stopped him? Maybe it's not as serious as I thought. I don't want to be branded as a doom merchant. The bad news might upset him. Besides that, he may not want to be my friend because of my fanatical views. <sighs> Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. The great commission that Jesus gave to his followers is this. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Good news. Christ died for your sins. Now that I'm saved, I want to go tell others. Hey, everybody. I'm saved. Are you? No. No. What did I do wrong? Can you help me? Yes. First, you must have a plan to win the battle. There is less confusion if you use a plan in one book of the Bible. One of the best presentations of a group of such scriptures is called the Roman Road. To be a soul winner, you should get yourself a small New Testament. This is a bad approach. Hi. Oh no! When they see it, they get scared. You must first prepare your little New Testament with guide notes for your own benefit. Take a colored pen or pencil and turn to the book of Romans. Your first verse is Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. Now that you've marked it, like we have above, you move to the next verse. The next verse is Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Always indicate in the margin the next verse you are to read. Here is the list you will follow on the Roman road. 1. Romans 3.10 2. Romans 3.23 3. Romans 5.12 4. Romans 5.8 5. Romans 6.23 6. Romans 10.13 Number 7. Revelation 3.20 Number 8. Romans 10, 9 through 10 This is an excellent but not required detour point from the plan. Mark all of these down in your New Testament so you won't make any mistakes. Hmm, let's see. First it's Romans uh, 16. No, it's uh, 12. Hmm. With this technique, you don't have to memorize the scriptures. That will come in time as you use the system. Before witnessing, pray. Asking God for power through the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to use you to win someone for Christ. Never hit them cold with a question like, Have you been saved? What kind of work do you do? I'm a carpenter. Talk about the weather or their job for a few minutes. May I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. If you were to die tonight, are you sure you would go to heaven? Any reply less than 100% certainty is a sign you must present the Roman road. If it were possible to know for sure that you could go to heaven, would you be interested? I'd be a nut if I didn't. If I could show you how you can know from the Bible, would you do what the Bible says? Sure. People aren't always interested in some get angry, be pleasant, leave a tract, and go talk to someone else. Romans 3.10 points out 
that I'm not righteous and that you're not either. Romans 3.23 says we all fall short of God's standard. Point out that you are a sinner first, then that he is also. Never put the sinner below you. The next point refers to Romans 5.12. In the beginning, God and Adam's heart were knit together. Through Adam's disobedience, their sweet togetherness was broken. Adam died both spiritually and physically. We inherit spiritual and physical death from our parents, Adam and Eve. Now move to Romans 5.8. Hmm. Here we find Christ died on the cross. He became our substitute by taking our place. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Most of us work for wages. Our pay for being a sinner is death. Why did Adam listen to Eve and sin? We'll come back to that later. Warning, never get off the Roman road by arguing doctrine or opinion. But the gift of God is eternal life. If someone gives you a gift and you receive it, you know you have it, right? Right. Romans 10.13 is a promise. If we call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. Not maybe, but shall. Revelation 3.20 is another promise. This shows Christ outside our lives. He wants to come into our hearts and be the center of our lives. He says he will come in if we ask him. Romans 10.9 tells us how to call on the name of the Lord. Would you like to call on the name of the Lord right now? Ask him into your heart and know that you are saved. Yes. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to present my friend, Mr. Jones, now. Mr. Jones, will you please pray? I don't know what to pray. I'll help you. If you mean business with the Lord, you tell him these words. Lord, I know I'm a lost sinner. Let Jones repeat those words. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins, Mr. Jones repeats, and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior, Jones repeats. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jones repeats. Amen. Do you mean business? Yes. Then according to Romans 10.13, you called upon his name. Do you believe he saved you like he said he would? If you died tonight, would you be sure you'd go to heaven? Yes. How do you know? God says so. Now go tell somebody what's happened to you because the word tells us to in Romans 10.9. Also, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Why don't you come to church with me and make a public confession of your faith? I will, thank you. You have just been born again spiritually and you need to grow up. The Bible is our spiritual food. You must read it daily. When you lead someone to Christ, give them a copy of this book published by Chick Publications, The Next Step. This will get them going in the right direction. The more you know about scripture, the easier it is to present the Roman road. You're not to be discouraged when I tell you that you're not going to save anyone. How come? We're here to be a witness for God. He prepares the heart, he draws the sinner, and he does the saving. Here are some important rules. Go neatly dressed. You represent the king of kings. Watch your breath. Use breath mints. Go with a partner if possible. Remember the eyes of the world are looking for Christ in you. There are times when you cannot deal personally with someone about Christ. But there is something you can do. 
you can take advantage of our highly successful tract ministry. Who, me? Why not? Could you leave a little booklet in a phone booth? Well, let's see. Yes, I guess I could do that. How about in restrooms, on top of a mailbox, on top of newspaper dispensers, on benches at county fair, on a doorknob with a rubber band, at laundromats, in taxi cabs, in library books, in newsstand magazines, in empty coat pockets, in luggage lockers, in rented cars, on window ledges, on retaining walls, on bleacher seats, at a bus stop bench, the church tract rack, to prisons. Could you stash, place, drop, plant three booklets in a conspicuous place every day? Why, of course, anyone could do that. It would be fun. Do you know how many you could reach in just one year? 1,000 souls for Christ. With these little booklets, you can start your own program by yourself. We have a fine selection to choose from. Do they work? One friend told us that over 500 were saved in his area as a result of these booklets. God bless you as you start one of the most exciting adventures of your life. Each booklet, A Proven Soul Winner. God dealt with my heart after reading This Was Your Life and Saved My Soul. Have used Chick Tracks ever since. To say that Chick Tracks get red is an understatement. Our church orders and stocks a lot of Chick Tracks, and I can honestly say that they get red at a rate of 6 to 1 over the other tracks. Thank you so much for your tracks. My son-in-law was recently saved. I used your tracks one by one to share with him. I used your tracks one way in Big Daddy with the children I teach. They help explain the plan of salvation in a way that captures their interest right away. Many have been won to the Lord. I have just read This Was Your Life. I was fortunate enough to run across it in a restaurant. It was left on my table by someone. It brought me to tears, and I was for the first time confronted with my own life and how I led it. I never thought one little booklet could bring about so much of a change. These soul-winning booklets can be obtained at your local gospel bookstore or from Chick Publications. Whether you use the Roman road to win them, or illustrated gospel literature. Remember, if you don't tell them, who will? In the future, at the judgment seat of Christ, Christians will receive their rewards based on their faithfulness. God has given us gifts, and we are stewards of these gifts. We all have one or more of them. Here are only a few praying, singing, preaching, teaching, soul winning, witnessing, serving, such as mopping floors unto the Lord, living Christ before others, giving time or money. Incorruptible crowns will be awarded. Crown of glory. Crown of life. Crown of righteousness. Soul Winner's Crown. These are obtained by practicing self-control, soul winning, obedience, faithful ministers feeding their flocks, joyfully enduring trials and testing. When it is all over, we will worship him and cast our crowns at his feet. Here is another view. This has nothing to do with your salvation because those who were born again have had their sins washed away by the blood of Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive his reward according to what 
he has done in the body, whether good or evil, considering what his motives and purposes have been and what he has achieved. Our works will be tested. 1 Corinthians 3, 11-15 Many of us will be in for a big surprise. Think often about the judgment seat of Christ. What you do now determines the position you'll hold with Christ throughout eternity. What will you do in heaven? You will judge angels. You will reign with Christ on earth and in the heavenlies. You will be witnessed at the great white throne judgment. You will judge the world. Attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. If God revealed to us the glories that await us, it would blow our minds. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The next step. Amen.